we have found that radio frequency ablation is a useful and safe method for treating small micropapillary thyroid carcinoma, if you will, with uh, an approach that is an alternative to active surveillance or surgery. Hello, everybody. I'm Mario Stan. I'm one of the endocrinologists in the Division of Endocrinology at Mayo Clinic. And I am pleased to talk to you about our upcoming article, Exploring Radio Frequency Ablation for T1 Papillary Thyroid Cancer in the United States, the Mayo Clinic Experience. I hope you'll look for this article in the November issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. To give you a bit broader perspective on this publication, and to actually explain to you what we've done. This is uh, our retrospective review of a select group of patients with micro PTC. I should say maximum diameter was 1.5 centimeters for these tumors who were not willing to undergo either active surveillance, but were also keen on preserving thyroid parenchyma and retaining thyroid function. These were individuals that were fully aware of uh, the benefits of those approaches, but wanted to explore something that is actually used quite extensively in Asia and in some countries of Europe, but not so far explored in the United States. We have been uh, looking at the results reported by centers outside of the United States in this area and our colleagues in radiology were very willing to take on this approach given their experience with radio frequency ablation for benign thyroid nodule, which followed after a few decades of experience with radio frequency ablation for liver and kidney lesions. This collaboration has been going on for 11 years and we've seen not only our medical perspective uh, being satisfactory, but also patient's perception being that this is a very well appreciated treatment that they would like to have available. As many of you know, we have been offering active surveillance for these small papillary thyroid cancers for now close to a decade. And certainly it is an approach that uh, I think is well balanced for a large group of individuals. However, not all patients are willing to undergo periodic surveillance. And still, some of them live with the anxiety that some day this tumor will progress and uh, the concern that they should have done something earlier. In that context, I think that this option of intervening with a minimal time consumption, effort consumption, it is valuable. I should say, if you look at the article, you will find that the average ablation was somewhere in the range of five minutes, and there was no ablation that uh, required more than 15 minutes of active therapy. We had no serious side effects. And I think that in expert centers, this approach can certainly be reproduced quite well and likely in the future improved. If there is a caveat to this procedure, it is the challenge of interpreting ultrasound images after the ablation is performed. I advise that you look at this procedure the same way you would look at surgery for thyroid cancer in that you desire a negative margin. Therefore, the ablation will incorporate a small area of normal thyroid parenchyma. So after the procedure in the early months, the ablated zone will look larger than the initial tumor. No surprise in untrained, for untrained eyes, I should say, that could generate anxiety that the tumor is progressing. So the follow-up in these cases has to be ideally at the same center or at a center that has a good experience in, in monitoring radio frequency ablation, both short and long-term. Because long-term, what we are seeing, if the lesion seems to be double in volume somewhere at three to six months, by two years, almost all these lesions are barely noticeable, if not absent. Figure three in the manuscript displays 
actual ultrasound images from one of these patients, and it illustrates what I was describing, a small signature of the initial tumor, a larger signature in the first half a year from the ablated zone, and then two years later, a barely noticeable footprint from what was a tumor and the ablated area around it. How do I see this from the patient's perspective? I am a patient myself, and I do love a discussion that outlines choices as opposed to a statement that you need to do this or that. And I think the addition of this choice to the treatment of small papillary thyroid carcinoma, again, a select group of patients, is uh, welcome. And we've seen this not only from the results that I described, but from the patient's interest as well over the years. It will require a dedicated team of endocrinologists and radiologists and interventional radiologists, but I think it is a good addition to our armamentarium and something that very likely will gather more emphasis in the guidelines in the future. As far as next step in this line of therapy, certainly you might say that two years of follow-up is a short follow-up for a rather indolent type of tumor. And that's where the future will hopefully shed light. I'm happy that other institutions, um, again, outside of the US have been able to look at these results five years out. And our results are very much in line with what they have reported. And they have found that five years is in no way different than the two years as far as excellent efficacy. Safety has been good but larger volume of patients certainly will add to that. And what we are currently exploring is uh, what tumor size would be best suited, what location of the tumor is also best targeted with this therapy, and where obviously the other alternatives should be favored. I hope that you will spend some time looking at our article in the upcoming November issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. You will find there our contact information, and I personally look forward to your emails in order to clarify aspects, or if you're interested in a collaboration or have uh, suggestions for us, it would be very helpful uh, to together if there are people in the audience with a larger experience. but. Uh, I appreciate you taking a look at uh, what we have found, and hopefully the future will look brighter from this perspective. We hope that you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mailclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com Mail Proceedings, or journal updates on Facebook, www.facebook.com dot com Mayo Clinic Proceedings. You can also follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, available at Mayo Proceedings. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research, published by Elsevier Incorporated. All rights are reserved, including those for text and data mining, AI training, and similar technologies.